Good morning, good afternoon, good evening. Today is day 11 of 21 days, and here in the United States it's September 11th, and it's a big day for a lot of people. Um, just, you know, the day the Twin Towers went down. So um, we can just pause for a moment for that. And let's do day day uh, 11. So um, I'm going to read this. So my, my laptop, I took my big desktop into Apple last night, so it's getting repaired for a week. Um, so... Um, and I'm going to be out of town, so I'm doing this off of uh, in the kitchen. This is a rare time that I have the entire house to myself, and you're probably hearing a dog bark because we have a couple squirrels. We don't have a lot of squirrels around here, but we have some cute ones, and when they um, chirp away, my one big dog tends to jump the wall, and the other little one's like, mm -hmm. Let me read this. So if you dream, if your dreams don't make you scared, you're playing too small. Don't live in fear. Living is for life is for living. Play full out and enjoy every minute. Just read this. Triggered so many layers. Like what the fuck am I supposed to live when in when I'm bombarded with fear-based programming since when we're bombarded with fear-based programming since we were born? Doing my best here, right? And then the ridiculous expectations of playing full out and enjoying every minute. I love, F you. <laughs> Hope this helps for another new age rewiring. Absolutely. So this is the thing. These, these, this is part of the personal development world that's highly based in ego consciousness. So it's like bigger, stronger, faster, do more, be all you can be. All that stuff. And we live in a culture that that is what the advertising promotes. And that's what I say, when you see advertising, ask yourself, what are they trying to sell me? What are they trying to sell me? Because you'll see it, how are they trying to sell it to me? Um, I talked about this on one video years ago when I, when I was a kid, they had the uh, head and shoulders dandruff shampoo commercials and it was like, the person was being shunned if they had some dandruff on their sleeve. I've come to find out now dandruff is yeast overgrowth. If you have a lot of dandruff, and I used to have a lot of dandruff when I was young, uh, it's, a, it's a sign of yeast overgrowth. But in, in our culture, it's like, oh, mm, oh, I, I want nothing to do with them because they have dandruff. In our lifestyle marketing, they're selling you a lifestyle. and. If you don't have the, I mean, I, I, there's a house being built as I drive home and it's got two, two car garages and it's got a garage for their RV. So it's a, basically a four car garage with a garage for the RV. And I was driving by that thinking of that, like for myself and if people want four cars, that's, that's up to them if, if that's what they want to do. But I was like, do I, would I ever need four cars? Like, do I? You know, I, I got enough dealing with one. Um, so it's just, what are they trying to sell you? And with that lifestyle marketing, so this this myth, and thanks for posting this, Emily. It's such a good one. The myth of living full out, living life to the fullest. So here's what happens for us. I mean, I don't know about anybody else out there, but life is hard. And it can be very hard at times. It can be joyful. It can be so many things. But to say, like, live full out and live life to the fullest all the time, like, whatever happened to rest and whatever happened to sitting quietly and allowing life to be moved through us, there's, that's not what our culture teaches us, especially in highly based ego marketing. It's like, you know, live full out, live life to the fullest. And then what ends up happening is if you're not doing that, how do you feel about yourself? Like, I, like, oh, and, and again, even social media has made that worse because we see the highlight reels. We're just constantly seeing the highlight reels of someone else's life and you're not knowing what's going on behind closed doors. And I know this as I've seen people that I know personally and I know their backgrounds 
and I know stuff that's posted and I'm like, man, if you saw what was posted, all you'd think is they live a fantastic living full out life. And yet I know, you know, what's um, re really behind the scenes that somebody asked me, I've been asked this recently a couple times, Marty, what do you do for fun? And honestly, I have to kind of laugh about that because I'm like fun. And I'm not saying this is a good thing. I mean, I mountain bike, I hike, I I tend to do um, things like that. But I literally was like, what do I really do for fun? And I think that can be a thing too. Like uh, years ago when I lived in Taos, we had jet skis. So on the weekends a lot, we'd go and we'd do jet skis. And I love the one comedian. He's like, just try and frown on a jet ski. And then when I lived there, it was a ski town, so I had a ski pass, and I would ski on the weekends, and I always had fun doing that. Here, you know, my husband and I have a lot of stuff going on around here. Um, hey, Barbara, gosh, I miss you. I've called you a couple times. Um, it's good to see you here. It's, it's like we have a lot of, like, irons in the fire, and I just, like, have surrendered to that's how life is right now. And it's good stuff. But it's, there's work involved with it. So, um, and I, I think that's why I have so many animals too, because I, like this morning I'm out filling the fountains and watering plants and my one little dog's following me around and he's jumping up on me and I'm just loving on him. While I do that, I sit down and my other cat jumps on my lap. That, I, that brings me joy. And I would say, what brings you joy more than, you know, what are you doing for fun or this and that? Because if you're not out having fun all the time, then... You know, it's like, oh, God, I must be living a half a life. And, you know, there's things in the world like with this this work and that it's like I I enjoy doing it. Is it is it always like fun, fun, fun? No, but I, I like I love doing this. I love seeing people on there. I just think we need to define it in a way that makes sense for us. So that's enough of my monologue, Barbara. Happy to have you here. So let's tap on this. Karate chop. Even though I hear these quotes, live life to the fullest, that actually exhausts me. I choose to honor I feel this way now. Even though I hear this said, if your dreams don't make you scared, ah. You're playing too small. What if my dreams are meant to inspire me? Not make me afraid. I choose to consider that right now. Even though I hear these sayings, live life to the fullest. If your dreams aren't scaring you, you're playing too small. What if I could see that differently now? And go to the eyebrow, live life to the fullest. But life is a mixture of so much. And are my dreams really meant to scare me? Kind of like life is better outside your comfort zone. Really, is it? I've been told that. Go outside your comfort zone. But am I really supposed to feel uncomfortable pursuing life? Life can be uncomfortable enough without feeding myself this stuff. If my dreams aren't scaring me, I'm playing too small? Really? What if this is all a product of a highly ego-based culture? What if I can rethink this? What if there's a force at work here 
that's greater than all of this. And what if I'm meant to learn how to let life move through me? To open to possibilities. To allow what's meant for me to come. And what's meant to go to go. What if there's a whole nother way to see this? And it's not about living outside my comfort zone or living life to the fullest. What if I'm meant to be used for the highest good? Whatever that is. And what if by opening to that possibility, amazing things are worked out through me rather than by me? And what if that makes a huge difference? So what if the next time I hear live life to the fullest, what if I can say, I want to open to the fullest expression that comes through me, that I'm guided and directed to. And what if that makes all the difference? And I feel lighter and freer. And take a breath. So that's why, again, any of those, I can rewrite all these. But um, I love that idea. It's like, you know, we're being used for the highest good. And I love the, you know, I've heard it so many times, use me. You, Oprah said she says it every day, use me. Use me for the highest good, whatever that is. And it's just a different way to see things. And I think we get caught up in like, are you having a lot of fun? Are you happy? Instead of like, what brings me joy? If I sit there and go, am I happy? Yeah, at times I am. And But if I think about what brings me joy, I feel joy every day. When I look out this window right here and I see all the birds and there's this family of quail that come. Oh my God, I just crack up and I just feel joy when I'm watching them, when I hear the horses coming in and they're clomp, you know, their their hooves are going over the gravel and they're going for the bird seed. When I see them, when I see my cat right now, Gracie, who's climbing up here to come say hi, it's like that brings me joy. And that's a totally, if you look for moments of joy in your life every day, I know we can find them. And yet even days that are just like, oh, this days, it's just like to go to a place of acceptance about it. And that makes all the difference. Barbara, I am so happy to see your name here. Much love to you. Hope everything's going well. And uh, talk to you soon. Bye-bye. And see you tomorrow for day 12.